system of elections in India. In this module, you will understand and analyze the system of elections in India. With a population of over 1.21 billion, India is the largest democracy in the world. Evidently, the largest democratic electoral exercise in the world is also conducted here. Let us find out how it is done. Elections are held at regular intervals to select representatives of the people. Through elections, people can also reject the representatives who had been chosen in the previous election if they are not satisfied with their performance. When elections are held across a country to elect representatives to the national lawmaking body, that is, the parliament, they are known as general elections. When elections are held to elect representatives to the state lawmaking body, they are known as assembly elections. Sometimes, by-elections are held between two regular elections in order to select a new representative. By-elections take place when the representative already chosen in regular elections is unable to function properly in that capacity anymore due to some reason. For the general elections, our country has been divided into 543 territorial divisions known as constituencies. People residing in a constituency elect one person from among different candidates who represent them in the Lok Sabha, which is the lower house of the parliament. For assembly elections, the states are further divided into smaller constituencies and a representative is elected from each one of them to the respective state legislative assembly. Some constituencies are reserved for weaker sections of the society who cannot compete with other candidates due to lack of resources such as money, social status, influence or because of their gender. Weaker sections include scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and women. The makers of the Indian constitution came up with a system of reserved constituencies for adequate representation of the weaker sections. In reserved constituencies, only candidates belonging to a particular weaker section can participate in and contest the elections. This makes the system of elections more representative and more democratic. Once the demarcation of constituencies is done, the electoral roll is prepared. The electoral roll is commonly known as the voters list. The electoral roll is a list of all the people in each constituency who are registered to vote in the elections. Only those who have their names on the electoral roll are allowed to vote. The electoral roll is revised regularly to add the names of new voters and remove the names of those who do not belong to that constituency anymore. A person who is eligible to vote but does not have his name registered on the electoral roll can apply to the electoral registration officer of his constituency. The officer in response updates the register accordingly. With a list of constituencies and voters in place, the country can go for elections when they are due. The notification for elections is issued by a constitutional authority. This constitutional authority is called the Election Commission of India in our country. The process of nominating candidates in different constituencies begins soon after the notification for elections is released. A person contesting under a political party is nominated by that party. Individual candidates may also contest elections independently without the support of any political party. Anyone who wishes to contest the elections has to fill the nomination form and pay a security deposit. He or she must be at least 25 years of age. All candidates are required to make a legal declaration regarding their assets and liabilities, educational qualification and criminal cases, if any pending against them. This information is put into public domain so that voters can make an informed decision about their representatives. After the nomination of candidates, campaigning for the elections begins. In this phase, the nominated candidates interact with the voters and address gatherings to mobilize support in their favor. 
Campaigning also gives people a chance to know the candidates better and choose the best representative from among a number of candidates. In a democracy, every candidate is free to conduct their election campaign whichever way they want to. However, on certain occasions, it may become necessary to regulate campaigns in order to ensure that the process is fair and equitable. For this, there is a model code of conduct in place. A model code of conduct regulates the actions of the candidates contesting elections and their campaigning activities. Any candidate breaching the code of conduct may be disqualified from the elections and not allowed to contest further. The election day is the day when voters cast their vote. Earlier, ballot papers were used for this purpose. Now they have been replaced by electronic voting machines, EVMs. Once the polling is over, all electronic voting machines are sealed and taken to a secure place. They are opened and the votes secured by each candidate are counted. The candidates getting the maximum number of votes in each constituency are declared winners. In a general election, the counting of votes in all constituencies usually takes place at the same time on the same day. After it becomes clear who the winning candidates are, the political party with the maximum number of winning candidates forms the government. Let's recap. Elections are held at regular intervals to select representatives of the people. Through elections, people can also reject the representatives who had been elected in the previous elections if they are not satisfied with their performance. General elections are held across the country, whereas assembly elections are held within states. By-elections are held between two general elections to fill a vacancy. A constituency is a territorial division comprising a group of voters. In reserved constituencies, only candidates belonging to a particular community can contest and win elections. The electoral roll or the voters list is a list of all the people in each constituency who are registered to vote in the elections. Every eligible person who wishes to contest the elections has to fill the nomination form and pay some money as security deposit. Candidates are also required to declare their assets and liabilities, educational qualification and criminal cases pending against them. During the stage of campaigning, candidates interact with the voters and address gatherings to mobilize support in their favor. Any candidate flouting the model code of conduct may be disqualified from the elections and not allowed to contest further. After voters cast their votes, the candidates getting the maximum number of votes in each constituency are declared winners.